Welcome back everyone. This is going to be part 6 of my Field of Glory 2 Beginner's Guide. Uh, this video we are going to cover the last major topic uh, that I feel is required and that's going to be unit quality and cohesion tests. Uh, in particular how unit quality affects cohesion tests as well as hopefully internalizing some of the common numbers or the common percentages uh, for um, passing cohesion tests. We'll also be talking about, um, as far as I can, I can dig in, the various modifiers and effects that go into how uh, cohesion tests can be can be tilted in terms of forcing your opponent to to maybe fail more than uh, the fair share of cohesion tests. Okay, since we haven't talked about cohesion tests in a, in a several videos, we are going to just do a quick recap on exactly what causes cohesion tests. If you want a sort of in-engine example, uh, you can always go back to part one uh, of the guide where I go uh, just clearly demonstrate exactly how to force cohesion tests, uh, these various cohesion tests, um, on your opponent within the game engine. Um, in terms of the various types of cohesion tests, I shouldn't say types since they're all simply cohesion tests, but uh, the, the conditions in which you can force your opponent to take a cohesion tests are in brief uh, if they suffer uh, a significant number of t uh, shooting casualties, um, if they lose a round of close combat, if they see a friendly enemy unit break, or if uh, a general uh, within the line of sight gets, uh, gets incapacitated. The last, uh, the last sort of thing that you need to worry about in terms of cohesion tests is if you try to fall back. The fallback command is uh, something I didn't cover in video one, simply because you can't force a, you cannot force an opponent to fall back. They have to choose to order their opponent. To, uh, sorry, they have to choose to order their unit to fall back, and that's simply uh, the act of uh, ordering your troops to fall back, uh, to to move directly backwards without, um, without turning around uh, in the face of the enemy um, and so long as uh, so long as the unit that's doing the fallback maneuver is within charge range of an enemy uh, unit that isn't some sort of light troop uh, we're talking about things like the uh, light archers light skirmishers uh, light horse for example um, as long as it's considered a quote unquote a formed unit uh, anything like medium foot heavy foot or, or, or any cavalry unit they're going to have to take a cohesion test uh, as as well. Keep in mind, um, it appears that the the unit doesn't need a clear like line of uh, doesn't need doesn't need a clear path. For example, you could have a unit fall back, um, and it could be within range of another enemy unit. And even though that enemy unit might not be able to to actually get at the unit that's falling back. Um, because of uh, zone of control rules, for example, um, it's still considered within charge range, it appears, and um, you, you will have to take a, co a cohesion test. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Um, the exact mechanics of the cohesion test is pretty basic, actually. It's just uh, the game basically takes two six-sided dice and, and basically tosses them. And you have to get a six or, or better after modifiers have been applied uh, in order to pass that cohesion test. And here's where unit quality comes into play. We already know um, how unit quality can affect combat. Unit quality uh, it has has a direct impact in, in combat uh, because of points of advantage. Elite units get 100 points of advantage in, in combat. Uh, superior units get 50. Uh, Average units get nothing, and raw units get a 25 point of advantage penalty. However, unit quality uh, also affects cohesion tests in that the better the unit type, uh, the better the unit type above average, um, the more re uh, the, the the higher the chance they get in terms of getting a reroll on a dice that came out unfavorably for them. 
Um, and just a quick recap, this is uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, superior units, when they uh, when the game tosses those two dice, they will get to pick up and re-roll any ones that they toss. So if a superior unit uh, tosses snake eyes on that um, cohesion test, they will get to pick up. Uh, they will get to pick up both dice and basically try again. Of course, on the subsequent reroll, if you still roll snake eyes or, or, or any one on any dice, uh, you unfortunately are stuck with that one. Elite troops get to reroll ones and twos, although there's really no true elite units in the game. Um, the only the only unit I can think of um, that is an elite unit would be the Triarii, but they don't seem to be considered true elites because if you take a look at the unit card, uh, they only get plus 75 POA, so they might be like very, you know, they're the halfway between uh, superior and elite. Uh, that's important because as you can see in the manual right here, they say that uh, the, the shades of quality are quote unquote fully represented mathematically by the game engine. And what this means is that, um, for example, you'll you'll have units um, such as the the Roman Hestati Principe units, the baseline uh, Hestati Principe units, which um, have a rating of above average, and that's halfway between uh, average and superior. We know this because um, they have a POA bonus of 25 for being above average, and that's exactly halfway between superior and uh, average. And just like how they get a halfway bonus in terms of POA, they also get a halfway bonus for rerolls. So what happens is when an above average unit has to test cohesion, it's going to take two dice, it's going to roll them the game. And uh, if, if uh, any one of those dice come up as ones, it will have a 50-50 chance of picking up that one and rerolling it. So while superior troops always get to reroll that first one, uh, the, the, the one that uh, they get on the initial roll, uh, above average units will sometimes, 50% 50, 50 of the time, get to pick up that one and, and go for the reroll. Of course, if they're just like superior troops or elite troops, if they still roll a one on that subsequent attempt, uh, that's, that's, just, that's just tough luck. Um, and you're stuck with that one. Uh, if a unit fails to drop a cohesion level, um, if sorry, if a, fa a unit fails its cohesion test, it's going to drop a cohesion level. And we've discussed that once again in the first video. Uh, there are four cohesion levels, steady, disrupted, fragmented, and routing. Um, so if you fail a cohesion test, it's you're going to drop one level. Um, and it sometimes can drop two levels if the score is bad enough, and that score is a two. So just uh, just like how you need a six to pass after modifiers have been applied, if you if you get a two or lower after uh, cohesion tests uh, modifiers have been applied, uh, you can get a double drop. Um, and just keep, and there's a couple of conditions where where it can't double drop. Um, so it can't double drop from shooting, and it can't double drop. Uh, from close combat unless it quote-unquote lost badly and we'll get into that uh, in a little bit in terms of modifiers but you can double definitely double drop if um, you are trying to fall back you can definitely double drop if your general dies uh, close by so those those can be risky things to do um, although although as I'll go into later usually having a general fighting especially in an important point of the battlefield is is something worth uh, worth doing an additional note in terms of cohesion tests um, when a unit takes a cohesion test from a source such as um, shooting or close combat it gets to retain that die roll for the rest of the turn if it takes more cohesion tests from that same source so for example say we were to shoot a unit um, and cause 16% casualties to that unit, um, it would then go through a cohesion test at, uh, at negative one, uh, at a negative one modifier. Say that unit rolled really well, say it rolled a 12, even if you were to shoot it repeatedly with uh, other units 
and thus cause it to take more cohesion tests. It's going to keep using that 12 for all subsequent shooting cohesion tests that turn. So the practical effect is that, of course, these die rolls are invisible to the players. You, you don't know, but um, it is possible that uh, you can shoot a unit or or beat a, uh, or beat a unit multiple times in close combat and, and watch it repeatedly hold firm and not lose cohesion test. This is not a result of that unit getting lucky multiple times. This is uh, more, more likely a case of a unit getting a really, really high score, such as an 11 or a 12 off the die roll. And then subsequently being able to survive uh, all these cohesion tests uh, because you can't pile enough negative modifiers to overturn that 12 and drop it below a 6 to cause it to fail. Uh, of course, the choice is always up to you whether to continue trying to, um, for example, continue to shoot a unit that has already passed a shooting cohesion test. Once again, there's no way for you to actually know what that die roll is, but um, a good rule of thumb would be unless you know for sure that you can inflict um, additional negative penalties um, with additional shooting or especially with shooting since close combat you you're usually locked in um, it might not be worthwhile to keep shooting so for example it, unless say say you you shoot a unit and you know for a fact that it's taken more than 16 percent casualties that's that turn and it's passed unless subsequent shots can it, it comes from for example artillery or maybe you can force a unit to lose more than half uh, more, more than 25 percent of its men um, it might not be worth your time. Uh, it may not be worth your time uh, in terms of shooting that unit. Um, with close combat, obviously that that's, that's different. Uh, so, uh, some a lot of times you're you're already locked into melee combat and you can't and you can't do anything. But it may affect your decision to say charge a unit uh, with with uh, that's in, engaged in close combat with additional unit when if you've already seen that unit pass a cohesion test for close combat. Um, say it lost close combat. Say say two pike units are going at it, um, and and your opponent's pike unit lost but managed to managed to uh, pass its cohesion test, uh, it might not be worth your time to charge it with additional unit uh, from the front because uh, even if you do end up beating it, it's unlikely uh, that you can force another negative modifier on it to, to change the outcome of that cohesion test uh, in, in, any, in, in any meaningful way. In terms of the actual modifiers itself, you'll find that there are very few positive modifiers. Um, there's two, uh, a grand total of two. Uh, if a unit is a heavy foot unit or a mixed foot unit, it's going to get a plus one die to its die roll. So if it rolls a five, uh, it's going to bump it up to a six. Um, if a unit is inspired by a friendly general in close combat, what that means is uh, if the general is in close combat, uh, it, it projects its uh, command radius, a quarter of its command radius, and converts that into a, a cohesion test bonus. Most uh, CNCs and multiplayer games come with a command range of eight, so effectively CNCs will radiate a, a cohesion test bonus uh, out to two squares, uh, whereas subgenerals tend to have a command radius of, I think, four. So, well, four divided by four, so it will only be adjacent units. Uh, units one square away from the general that is fighting that is going to get uh, that plus one to its cohesion test modifier. It's important to note if, it, if it's not obvious that um, if you do intend to risk the general in close combat because you feel like you want to have that cohesion test bonus uh, for the troops around it, uh, that's, you, you need to commit the general to combat first. Uh, obviously cohesion tests occur at the time they're taken. Um, so 
so if a unit uh, fails a fails a cohesion test, uh, when that if if a friendly general then goes into combat subsequently, you're 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 not re you're not getting any benefits to that. So if your intention in terms of fighting uh, with a general goes beyond the plus fifty points of advantage, it's because you want to have your units close by to have um, an additional the additional boost to its cohesion test. Make sure you commit the general first. Um, most of this list is pretty self-explanatory, to be honest. Um, so I will pick out a couple that are not so obvious. Uh, the first is units suffered uh, significant clo uh, total close combat damage this turn, which is more than five percent. Um, that 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 uh, five percent is not casualties, so it's not five percent men lost that it then suffers uh, suffers a minus one to its. Uh, to its cohesion test, um, close gap, close combat damage is not casualties, uh, since casualties are sort of determined after uh, we found out who won or lost. For practical purposes, though, uh, this is going to show up. It's, it's going to show up pretty often. Um, I can't. Uh, I've played with some some units in the editor, um, just smashing different units together, and almost always this one showed up. Uh, a couple of situations showed up where I think a unit was like severely disordered, somehow still managed to win, um, and uh, it inflicted so it did not inflict enough damage uh, to 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 generate this. Uh, but that's exceedingly rare. Um, in general, if a unit loses in close combat, expect to be testing at minus one. Um, this other one is total close combat damage suffered this turn exceeds total close combat damage inflicted by a large margin. So this is the quote unquote losing badly uh, clause. Um, and this one also is because close combat damage is not a number the game presents to you. Um, it's also very difficult to give a rule of thumb in terms of when this applies only in that this applies less often than the 5% rule. Um, but it does happen very often when heavy foot units are going at it. Uh, heavy foot units, um, or, or, or heavy foot units against other units, uh, units that cause a lot of damage uh, with very high POAs. Um, I've th those are the those are the combats that tend to generate um, excessive uh, or the losing badly clause. Um, most of the time, light troops when they attack uh, attack they will not generate this losing badly clause simply because they don't generate enough damage for that to, to happen. Uh, units, uh, in terms of percentage of men lost, that's fairly self-explanatory. Uh, for foot battle troops with threatened flank, that's an, that's an additional negative one. And um, that basically, the best way I can put it is if foot units are, are locked in combat uh, and a foot unit loses, that unit, for lack of, of a better term, sort of looks around and sees if an enemy unit has a, a flank charge on it, has a possibility of doing a flank charge on it. If you're not familiar with what a flank charge is, um, just go back to video one. There's a very clear example of what is and is not a flank charge. But in general, if, if that foot unit looks around at the moment it loses uh, combat and sees that its rear arc is threatened, there's a unit that can charge and, and into its rear uh, from the rear arc, it's going to suffer an additional minus one. In terms of this set of uh, negative modifiers, um, only one of these can be applied at a time. Uh, so, for example, foot testing for having lost impact phase against uh, impact foot. As we know, impact foot uh, or uh, in, uh, impact foot um, or elephants, for example, cause minus one modifiers. Um, but you can only stack one of those at once. Uh, so, for example, say a unit is charged in the same turn by both an elephant and uh, and an impact foot unit. Um, even if it lost both combats, the the amount of uh, negative modifier coming from those two sources, from the elephant and the impact foot, is only minus one. Um, so none of the effects here can be stacked more to cause more than a, a negative one uh, modifier on its outcome. Additionally, in terms of shooting 
versus shooting modifiers versus melee modifiers, those are also kept separate and independent. Um, so for example, you can, you can shoot up a unit so that it has to take shooting uh, a shooting cohesion test at uh, a minus one or maybe minus minus two if you've managed to get an artillery shot into it, but that minus two will not carry on to close combat. Say you charge the unit after you've shot it up, um, th that unit will not carry its shooting negative modifiers on to close combat. Those, those will sort of be quote unquote reset. But of course, things like uh, unit lost, uh, percentage casualties or cohesion taste, those obviously don't get wiped. Uh, those those uh, are, are stuck with the unit. In this spreadsheet I'm presenting to you now, I've taken the time to generate the odds uh, or the percentages in terms of uh, any given unit, uh, of any given unit quality that you're going to find in the game, um, and their chances of passing or failing a, um, a cohesion test. And we've got a range of numbers here dependent on uh, how many negative or positive modifiers apply. Um, and we've got just a summary of some of the more common modifiers here. The percentages to take away from is, uh, is that the average baseline quality unit actually doesn't have great odds of passing cohesion tests. It means that um, things like fallbacks under the face of the enemy, uh, under, under enemy pressure or, um, or sending a unit that you know will will have a bad you know a, a good chance of losing in combat um, that that average quality unit doesn't really have uh, a good chance of passing cohesion tests um, while 27 percent as a baseline uh, 28 percent of the baseline seems uh, seems you know relatively low in terms of a chance to fail a cohesion test um, and that's that's one, one out of four times, uh, if you're relying on, on a modifier score of zero, you're going to end up failing and losing uh, cohesion levels or morale status. And it's a lot easier to lose morale than it is to recover morale since uh, units don't get to test every single turn uh, to, to try to recover that morale. You usually have to stick a general in it in order to get it to test every turn and generals are, are obviously limited and valuable and the, the demands on their time uh, is going to, going to be great. Um, as I mentioned before, a close combat is usually the one, uh, a close combat and, and being shot at usually is are the most common, uh, common sources of morale tests. And more often than not, you're testing at at least one uh, at least uh, a, a negative modifier of one so for example an average quality unit which most skirmishers are um, if you if you manage to deal more than 16 percent uh, uh, of its starting of its starting strength that turn in casualties it's going to suffer a minus one and it has a 40 percent chance of failing uh, similarly that 40 percent chance of failing is going to happen to uh, most units that uh, that fight and lose in close combat because uh, this 5% close combat, combat damage modifier almost always applies. Um, and very often, especially in heavy foot units, as I mentioned before, you're going to suffer an additional minus one for quote unquote losing badly. Uh, and as you can see, an average unit, if it loses badly, is going to is stuck with nearly a 60% uh, chance of, of failing. Uh, that that means it's important to emphasize having having the few sources of uh, positive modifiers and keeping the negative modifiers that you do have under your control to to a minimum. Uh, for example, say we're we're testing a negative two, that's already a very high chance of sixty percent. Um, say you offer you're offering a threatened flank on that unit. All of a sudden you're you're, you're up to the, almost three quarters of the time, you're gonna end up failing that cohesion test. And remember, the more die rolls you, you stack up, the higher chance you're gonna have with in terms of double breaks, uh, like losing two morale status, um, two cohesion status levels, uh, because uh, anytime you roll a modified score of two, um, 
you're going to lose uh, you're going going to lose two cohesion levels on a large number in a large number of situations losing badly in close combat being one of them um, also in terms of having a general fighting uh, this one obviously is up to you in terms of whether you're going to risk a general in combat um, and how often you do it uh, besides the 50 POA uh, it they also confer large bonuses in terms of cohesion tests simply because they can start working against some of these uh, heavy modifiers for example if you can drop a negative two back down to a negative one that's that's decreasing your odds of odds of breaking in terms in, relatively speaking by by close to 50 percent um, it's almost it's 40 percent uh, uh, reduction in relative terms going from testing at minus two to testing at minus one so it is a big deal having a general fighting uh, obviously uh, that decision is up to you though in terms of unit troop quality uh, these have a reasonably large effect on um, on on cohesion tests in general because average quality units, as discussed before, get the chance to reroll 50% of their ones, and superior quality units get a chance to reroll um, all any ones they roll, uh, unless it's their second roll, unless it's their actual reroll. Their chances of failing are actually much reduced. Um, in terms of, in terms of, for example, generating a six say you have a very simple fallback maneuver you're doing with no other modifiers instead of uh, instead of 27 percent or 28 percent you're testing at just over 21 and that's a reduction of about 30 percent so the average unit has a 30 percent higher chance of of losing cohesion tests uh, failing a cohesion test versus the average quality unit if we're testing at a baseline at the baseline level the differences you'll notice, though, the relative chance, uh, the the relative difference uh, decreases for 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 uh, higher higher true quality units as you climb the, the the modifier score. For example, at the baseline level, we we test we test thirty percent better, um, but if you're testing at minus three, that advantage that relative advantage climbs only to about a seven percent bonus which is another reason why you really want to keep uh, these negatives uh, in check as much as possible um, while many things are out of your control for example you can't you can't prevent the bad die roll that caused you to to suffer a lot of uh, cl close combat damage um, you can't you can't control things like um, how much damage you take from shooting there are a lot of things you can control such as um, if you have medium foot make sure make sure you limit their exposure to things like mounted troops or opposing heavy foot or if you have powerful impact foot units uh, that are coming for a section of your line try to have something of uh, try to shore up those areas with generals or or powerful units of your own uh, because even if you start getting higher quality units, say let's take a look at a superior quality unit. If as, as soon as you start stacking like large numbers of ne negative modifiers to it, um, the sort of the inherent the inherent bonuses that these units have, these superior quality and above average quality units have in terms of being more steady, quote unquote, than their average quality counterpart, is much reduced. For example, another example, a superior quality unit will only fail at the baseline level at you know, just under 15% of the time. That represents almost a nine. You're almost you're you're almost twice as likely to pass a cohesion test uh, in that circumstance than an average quality unit. But if we're to stick it with a minus three, you you can see the relative advantage is much smaller in terms of uh, of passing. I mean, it's it's you know. It's not. It's not nothing, but uh, but superior quality and above average quality units, uh, they they will definitely their their advantages are basically are, are much better um, if you don't allow allow it to get stacked with multiple modifiers. 
Um, just for completeness sake, I've shown some the elite quality unit here. Um, there are no true elites in the game, if I recall. Actually, there is one. These are the veteran Roman legions found in the 105 BC to 24 BC list. Um, they are, I think, the only elite quality units, but you can see how powerful elite units are. On top of their massive 100 POA bonus they get, uh, they also very rarely break in, uh, unless subjected to um, some pretty crazy conditions. Uh, and finally, we're just going to, these are the percentages for the raw units. Um, I'm, I personally am not a big fan of raw units, uh, simply because, well, there's the, the minus 25 POA aspect that raw quality units bring to the table. They, they lose 25 POA. But um, also, um, although the effect is not massive, they also test worse on average, so anywhere, anywhere between you know, 17, 10 to 10 to 70 percent worse in terms of passing cohesion tests compared to the average, uh, average quality unit. I will probably be throwing this up on the official form. So if you, if you, if you want to know these numbers, uh, you can get them. But um, in general, it's more important, I think, to understand um, just how quickly. Um, these negative modifiers can stack up and how quickly they can affect especially uh, for average units which most of the most of the time you'll be using especially in multiplayer how how even adding an additional negative one to the die roll can quickly ruin your chances of, of passing or failing co cohesion tests this is also why uh, in particular sometimes you can feel um, I remember a discussion very early on in the game how warbands felt very powerful, warbands being a powerful impact foot unit, um, 200 POA, and, and obviously the ability to stack on yet yet another negative modifier on top of usually beating up uh, opposing foot uh, quite badly um, means that you know, going from a negative two maybe to a negative three, that's another another significant jump in terms of your chance to, to end up failing um, failing a a uh, end up failing a unit uh, unit cohesion check. It also pays off to to, to, to take a look at this and understand. Uh, sometimes it can be risky uh, to use a general to try to save uh, a unit. Um, that is routing. If you don't know, if you don't know, uh, units that are routing need to essentially pass a cohesion test in order to rally. And as you can see, if the unit's routing, it's automatically dinged with a negative three. So your chance of passing a, a cohesion test is relatively low, even if you stick a general in it so that it can test every turn. Uh, it's seventy-two percent chance of failing. So consider carefully before using a general unit to. Uh, save routing units. Although I, I should say that um, the odds of fail, especially for a superior quality unit, the odds of failing something like 62% uh, uh, multiple times, um, as long as as long as the troop uh, the, the unit doesn't disperse, is re reasonably good. And and obviously, if the unit is a heavy foot unit, um, it, it, you can always bump it back. Uh, the the modifiers always bump it back up, so that uh, your chance of passing sometimes is reasonably good. Um, but um, but be be aware, especially if unit has suffered 25 or 50 percent casualty and started stacking negative modifiers. Um, sometimes it's, it's better just to not use that unit in a fight or, or not bother using a general to try to save it uh, save it from routing status simply because uh, if things go badly uh, it's it's very unlikely for that unit to, to ever recover. And that's going to do it for uh, part six and the video series as a whole. Hopefully if you've watched some or all of these videos, uh, you've managed to gain some information you didn't have before or come away with a clearer understanding of a game mechanic that may have uh, mystified you in the past. Uh, the goal of the videos is always to provide uh, the, the viewer with the information for them to make uh, hopefully smart choices in the game uh, so that uh, the results of the game, win or lose, are determined uh, more by your choices in strategy and your ability to forecast uh, likely outcomes rather than simply uh, not understanding the game or, or 
being ambushed by a particular aspect of the game you, you didn't have uh, a good understanding of. Um, if you made it through all the videos, I uh, hope you've enjoyed them and uh, thank you very much for watching.